Margaret Ninsky now shows some environments you can control by touching a display screen. We've been working on gestural programming environments. A group including Danny Hillis, Dan Hattenlocker, David Wallace, and myself started by using a touch-sensitive screen with added force sensitivity. One of the paths of research we're pursuing is how to make the powerful ideas in computation accessible to very young children. An avenue we've taken to do that is to make computer concepts and computer programming concepts available through hand gesture. This is a gesture-based finger painting program. Wherever I move my finger, I get paint. I can change the colors over here. If I push harder, I get bigger blobs of paint. Here we're especially interested in what are the natural kinds of things you can do with gesture that make it fun to paint. So we're not so interested in choosing from, as I say, great big menus of sophisticated operations, but how can you come to this thing and, and with your hands make something that you enjoy. We're making the same gestural language that you use to paint, pushing harder, pushing softer, moving something from here to there, um, to let you manipulate um, chunks of, of program. And I'll show you a preliminary version of that. This is a gestural version of a button box for programming. That idea was originated by Radia Perlman at the MIT AI lab. I'm going to teach the turtle how to draw a circle, so I'm going to be writing a program in this button box language. Well, I can say forward and turn right, forward, turn right, forward, turn right, and forward, get this button back, turn right. I can just keep doing that, and as you know, the turtle will draw its way around a circle. Well, this isn't very organized. I'm going to take this forward button up here. First, I want to do forward, then this right button, then I want to do right. So I go forward, then right. I kind of like to organize them in a line. And I think every time I do that, I'll beep. So, I, so I'll go forward, right, beep. Forward, right, beep. Well, I can take that sequence of actions and I'll hit t tap a box button. It turns into a box. That's its action. Put the box around all those buttons. And then I'll grab a do it button, put it in the box, and when I tap it, I do everything in the box. So as you can see, the turtle's going forward, right, and then beeping each time I hit do it. Well, I'll take the close button, put it in the box, and tap close. That cr closes up the box and creates a new button right here with a uh, computer gave it a label for me. And every time I tap that button, the turtle does all those actions. Ed Hardebeck has implemented the gesture button box and this gestural logic simulator inspired by Warren Robinette's Rocky's Boots program. My button box world is, has blue borders here. I consider that a room. That's the room with the buttons in it. And here's a room with some extra buttons in it. Over here, I go from room to room by touching their doors, which you can't see. Touch the door up here, and I go into this room full of logic gates. This is a special logic output device that also interacts with buttons. It's called the hand. And it acts like your hand. I'm going to move it down into the button box world. I'll point the finger at the forward button. Now I'll go get this clock and hook it up. Now we see that each time this logic one input clocks the hand, the hand hits the forward button, and the turtle goes forward. Now I'm going to go get my copy button move this stuff out of the way, and I'll make some copies of this handy setup. And this time, okay, so now I have two of these. Now I notice I could copy the clock, and I get an independent clock clocking away here. Just, I'll hook this up to a forward button, and this up to a right turn button. Clear the screen, so we'll put the turtle in the middle, and now watch the turtle. It's being run by a parallel program, one clocking the forward button and one clocking the right button. And we see the lo classic logo, forward a little, right a little, program being done by a parallel process. This is a special room called the map room. The objects in this room, rather than being buttons or logic gates, are themselves little pictures of all the other rooms. And in fact, we can move them around 
put the blue room here, and now it's really here.